doing, all of you rebels? Welcome back to University Speaks. I'm Lena Atu. And I'm Jelani Watts. Let's get started. University Speaks is celebrating 40 years of the Thomas & Mack Center. Our state-of-the-art sports and entertainment facility opened in 1983. Home of our UNLV run and rebels, the Thomas & Mack also hosts a variety of other events annually, including the NBA Summer League, National Finals Radio, and the Mountain West Basketball Tournaments, just to name a few. The first event ever held in the Thomas & Mack was the Run and Rebels game against Victoria, Canada in November of 83. In the following year, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar broke the NBA all-time scoring record at the Thomas & Mack against the Utah Jazz. We're excited to see our home facility continue to thrive in the years ahead. And grads, it's that time of year again. The UNLV Bookstore has all of your cap and gown commencement related materials. You can reach them at 702-736-3955. And Rebel Resources returns, and this time we have a peer mentor in studio. Jelani, over to you. Welcome back to Rebel Resources. For many first-year students, transitioning to college life can be a real challenge. Peer mentors know what it's like, and that's why they're here to help. I'm joined today by the Executive Director of First Year Programs, Dr. Karen Violanti, and an active peer mentor, Hugh Wen. Thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. Of course. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, so, Dr. Violanti, what is the purpose of the peer mentoring program here at UNLV? Yeah, thanks so much for asking and for having us here today. Mm -hmm. The purpose um, really is to provide students with um, a structured network of peer support. Mm -hmm. um, in the first year, it's really important for students to know there's another student who understands what that experience is. So, the peer mentor program, which is a campus wide initiative, really does offer that community for new students to connect um, through those peer mentors to the community, to resources, really providing that opportunity for them to feel like they really belong and mm -hmm. build that sense of community. And this program's been going on for a while, I'd imagine. Yes, yes, there's been um, pockets growing over the years. The official um, structured program began in 2019. Okay, great, yes. great. So just before the pandemic, which is good because Correct. it was able to survive the pandemic. Absolutely. Yeah, yes. for sure. Um, Hugh, as a current peer mentor, um, what do you do to support and assist the students that you work with? Yeah, so there is a saying that from a businessman that I feel like describes my role perfectly. Mm -hmm. And he said that life is all about how you make other people feel. Absolutely. It's It's simple and it's not hard. Mm -hmm. So for my role, it's simple because I can just be a buddy who share the resources, the tips um, to the peer mentor who's willing to listen all the time. And then uh, I can just share my experience at UNLV and the been there, done that stories. Mm -hmm. And it's also hard because what we peer mentors share can actually touch people's lives and even change people's lives. So I've had mentees who came to me and asked about the very easy to talk about topics like time management, major minor selection, and also test taking or even like Vietnamese culture and cuisine good spot to hang on, sleep on campus. Mm -hmm. And then I've also met mentees who came to me and asked about mapping out college journey yeah. or mental health or stress management and also about um, about the um, very specific career related questions. Okay. So it's um, the sky is really the limit for what we can share. But however, I feel like the pre mentor program is special because what we share is actually personalized. So it's tailored to our experiences and also to the mentees needs. That is so helpful, especially for these new students, because they really, the guidance is really what they need. Yes. And it's so great that you, you're really there for them. That's amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Dr. Vilanti, who can have a peer mentor? Is it under all majors or is it only for graduate, undergraduate students? How does that work? Yeah, another great question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, right now, the, the program in place is geared towards undergraduate students. Mm -hmm. um, and UNLV has a really incredible network built, as I mentioned, um, which, which kind of stemmed from the 2019 launch. Yeah. Um, so all, basically all, all um, students coming in um, will have access to the peer mentor program. So um, the unique structure really includes um, an umbrella structure under mm. the vice provost um, area. But within that, there is a unique and customized peer mentor program within each of the colleges. Yeah. And then in addition to that, there's other areas like the intersection and undergraduate research, um, gear up other kind of specialized areas that also have peer mentors. Mm -hmm. um, so all the students are associated with the program in their college and or in the different programs around the air, around the college in the area. Mm -hmm. um, so every student will have access to that as they start their UNLV journey. Amazing, mm -hmm. so much variety. Yes, it. and it's all it. customized, which mm -hmm. it, like you talked about, it's just amazingly personal, yeah. um, which really aligns well with our with our goals around first year experience as a whole. Of course, mm -hmm. absolutely, yes. thank mm -hmm. you. Um, and Hugh, how have you seen students benefit from the program after having you as a mentor? Yeah, so I became a peer mentor 
one semester ago mm -hmm. last year yeah. and then we actually survey people after each semester yeah. and then we received 666 surveys uh, response uh, mm -hmm. responses last yeah. semester and then 90 percent agree or strongly agree that the peer mentor have them specifically learn about college resources and also feel connected to other people mm -hmm. and getting involved on campus and even clarify the personal goals mm -hmm. so for me I remember two mentees that I've had I have like one mentee last semester and then she was an exploring major mm -hmm. so she she did she didn't know what major she would pick and then after talking with me she picked hospitality and then she also ended up founding a club with me so right now she's serving on the leadership board with me so that's mm -hmm. really amazing how she clarify her personal journey how she clarify her goals and then move on and take a leadership position in our hospitality college and also i've met like a few other non-traditional students and veterans and people who return to school from the armies after like five or six years mm -hmm. and then they were amazed and i could mm -hmm. see the spark in their eyes like oh i didn't know we have these resources it's so helpful and i can't wait to use those those resources Absolutely. so that's very fun and uh it's really really amazing to see the impact right away and where can we go to learn more information about the peer mentors so usually uh each program is slightly different so for the campus wide peer mentor mm -hmm. we have the student success page or you can just google UNLV peer mentor and from there you can email the peer mentor at UNLV Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. then we also have the Rebels news newsletters sent out every week, and we have the peer mentor program for that. Mm -hmm. Or they can just simply ask the college advisors or for the first year seminar instructor. Mm -hmm. And the same for the for, um, exploring major. Sometimes we talk about peer mentor in class, or they can just um, receive email from the Academic Success Center. Okay, thank you guys so much. This was very helpful, I'm mm -hmm. sure, for a lot of students. So thank you. Thank you. Alrighty, and that'll do it for this installment of Rebel Resources. Lena, I'll send it back to you at the desk. Thank you so much, Jelani. The Greenspun College of Urban Affairs is offering a course to get students real-world experience in solving crimes. Our reporter, Caitlin Bustamante, has the details. Urban Adventure is an experiential course within the Greenspun College of Urban Affairs. Students are able to apply the lessons they learn in the classroom as they adapt to real-world roles within a simulation-based crime scene. Actors help bring the crime scene simulation to life as students serve as field reporters, victim advocates, and crime scene investigators. Here's a look at two students fulfilling their roles as public information officer and incident commander during an urban adventure investigation press conference. Basically all we know right now is that there were two 911 calls. One reported that a white man pushed a white woman into a bench um, and another 911 call claimed that the woman simply fell onto the bench. We're still investigating to see which one actually happened. Former social work student Celestina T. states, the major strengths of this class were being able to bring together a group of people across five different majors and give them an experience that is fun, collaborative, and challenging. If you're interested in enrolling in this course, sign up for GSC 300 Urban Adventure when fall 2023 registration begins on April 10th. Reporting for University Speaks, I'm Caitlin Bustamante. For more information about the class, visit the Urban Affairs website. Urban Adventure isn't the only class getting students real-world experience. Bistro 410 is a student-run restaurant held by the College of Hospitality. Our reporter, Shante Lewis, has more. Students have been lining up to grab a plate, but what is Bistro 410? So here in the Stan Fulton building, we run the Bistro 410 class, otherwise known as FAB 410 course for the food and beverage department. What we have here is really interesting and unique curriculum. So we've designed a concept to where students can get engaged with different types of ethnicities and food and beverages. And what we do is an all-class collaborative menu. From the front of the house, social media, marketing, and design strategies have been implemented into the class. What attracts customers to the restaurant, too, are the pictures of food, the more uh, enticing it is, the more delicious it looks on camera. I've never really had a job that put me into a direct leadership role where I was solely responsible for making sure I'm delegating tasks, making sure everyone gets every the job done. In the back of the house, students work as a team to make sure the meal is ready to send out. So working in the back of the house is really cool. You get to see everybody in, on, in their teams. You might have seen UNLV popping up on your feeds more recently. Maya Goodwin talked with students who run the UNLV social media accounts. Thank you for that, Jelani and Lena. Just as they said, this is the first official social media segment for University Speaks. For each episode, I will be the one to let you know about all things social media surrounding UNLV. To get us started, I thought to highlight the two students who run UNLV's official TikTok page. By now, you've probably come across the official UNLV TikTok page. But behind the creative, informative, and entertaining posts are fellow students Alexa and Sarah. 
here to share exactly what it is like to not only run, but also be the face of a large university's TikTok. I'd say all of our days are pretty different because we're not always filming the same thing, but the typical theme is overall we find an idea, we film it, we edit it, get it out and post it, but it's always different, so. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. Pedro Pascal memes? <laughs> Any of them? The one with Nicolas Cage? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, definitely like the on the street. <laughs> yeah, the on the street videos. Our on the street videos are always like so fun. We mo we always meet like the most interesting people on campus. We're like, oh, I didn't know you existed. <laughs> like, it's very fun. Yeah, we get interesting answers. Mm. Oh. Probably not laughing. At it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably being serious. <laughs> the serious aspect is something we are. And sometimes the TikTok buttons, the draft, and the post button. We had an incident filming, and I was like, oh, what idiot would hit the post button instead of the draft button? And then I hit it. And then I hit it again, and we well, refilmed it. Twice, I think twice three or three times. times. I don't know, but that, mm -hmm. that's a challenge for me. Yeah. I mean, we like both, but mm -hmm. like, we, we, we specialize in TikTok. To our TikTok. Yeah. Definitely follow us, on, follow TikTok. us on TikTok. <laughs> Official UNLV. <laughs> That's a wrap for the first social media segment here on University Speaks. Be sure to follow us at UniSpeaks UNLV on Instagram and Twitter. Thank you so much, Maya. Swifties, are you ready for it? Taylor Swift is being represented at the Gateway Arches on the North Strip. The LED light structure at Las Vegas Boulevard is being lit to reflect all the colors of Swift's albums. The Eras Tour is set to last until mid-August. And from one concert to another, Drake announces highly anticipated tour called It's All a Blur. Joined with 21 Savage, Drake will make his Sin City stop at T-Mobile Arena in early September. Tickets are on sale at T-Mobile Arena's website. T-minus seven months until Formula One hits the streets of Las Vegas for the Heineken Silver Grand Prix. But before that can happen, road improvements must be made. An image coming onto your screen, a map of the F1 circuit paving plans, which section off the track and sorts the track with staggered paving dates to ease traffic strains. Paving is already underway in some areas of the track, with this round of paving finishing in the summer. Another round of paving is slated for the summer and fall to ensure the best possible racing surface for the fastest cars in the world. And moving over to some hoops news, the Aces have a new face in their ownership group. Tom Brady, one of the NFL's best quarterbacks of all time, has purchased a stake in the team, owned by Raiders owner Mark Davis. Brady, in his retirement, has made many business moves, with this one making a splash on social media. The quarterback stated he is excited to have a stake and has always had a love for women's sports, as well as respect for the Aces organization. The Aces are reigning the WNBA champions and begin their title defense May 20th in Seattle against the Storm. March Madness took to Las Vegas for the first time in history for a pair of Sweet 16 games. And the contest between UCLA and Gonzaga was one to remember, especially for one Las Vegas native, Julian Strother. Strother's Bulldogs down late, 76-75, and Strother gets the ball at the logo and pulls up, hitting the deep three off the back and the rim and in. The Zags go out front by two, get a stop on defense, and punch their ticket to the Elite Eight. Strother was also caught by a TV camera's relishing the moment saying, this is my city, in the celebration. That pride carried over in the post-game press conference and to his team as well. Take a listen. I mean, there's moments like that that you can't make up. I mean, those, those are literally the moments you dream of, you know, just to even make a shot like that in March Madness. And then, I mean, just to uh, be back home in Vegas is like the cherry on top. Um, but words can't describe how proud I am of just our team and our resilience. I mean, nothing was going our way. I mean, we weren't playing our, uh, our brand of basketball at all through that whole first half. And I mean, we flipped that switch and, you know, there's not, there's not a lot of teams in the country who could, who could, you know, bind together and make a run like that. The Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight weren't the only things that went down in March. With that recap, we kick it over to Josh Heron. Josh, what do you got for us? Thanks, Selena. You know, between this last episode and the one today, we had crazy moves during NFL's free agency period that began just a couple weeks back. And a couple of those moves came from our own Las Vegas Raiders. That's where we start this month's sports segment, as the Raiders have recently picked up Jimmy Garoppolo from the San Francisco 49ers to replace Derek Carr, who is obviously in New Orleans. Jimmy G signed a three-year contract with $33.7 million guaranteed. That was not the only move, however. Darren Waller is going to the New York Giants for a trade for a third-round pick in the NFL draft. Waller acquired 1,000 yards, receiving back-to-back -back seasons in 2019 and 2020. 
In March Madness news, the Lady Rebels took on the Michigan Wolverines in the first round of the Greenville Regional. It was all Michigan all game as the Wolverines won by a score of 71 to 59, and it makes it back to back years where the Lady Rebels lost in the first round of the Women's March Madness tournament. I'm just heartbroken. Moving on to the NHL, the Vegas Golden Knights are staying atop of the Western Conference and the Pacific Division. This is from our game against the Vancouver Canucks on the road. Knights won 4 to 3. And lastly, the CONCACAF Nations League has announced that their finals will take place here in Vegas at Allegiant Stadium, including the semifinals and third place match. The event will last June 15th through the 18th. Tickets are on sale now. Also, the UNLV Skating Rebels look to the national tournament, entering as the fourth seed for the second year in a row. But looking to right their wrongs after giving up multiple unanswered goals in the semifinal game last year against Central Oklahoma. The Skating Rebels began playing against 13 seeded Grand Valley State, and the rookies would have to lead the squad in this one after being down early. Jackson Wyatt, the freshman, burns a rebound to give it the tie game. At two GVC goals later, Caleb Strong would light it up, scoring this one from the post to bring UNLV within one. And then this goal on the rush to tie the game. Now, this would eventually go into overtime, where none other than Rob McCollum let the shot go from the points. And the puck finds the way all the way through traffic and gives UNLV a win. Four to three in overtime, and they live to play on another game. We, we love our recruiting class uh, that we had coming in last year, and, and we knew that they would play a big part in what we were doing, uh, both offensively and defensively. So for guys like Caleb and Jackson to step up when we really needed them to, it was great to see. And, you know, I, I think that we, we look forward to be able to lean on these guys pretty heavily. Uh, in the upcoming years, but both of them took really big strides this year in their development, and I, uh, I look forward to seeing, you know, how much further they go uh, throughout the summer and moving into next year. UNLV moves on to play to rival the Liberty Flames for their fifth meeting this season, third in a tournament setting, and their second straight meeting at Nationals. This game for UNLV would be bad off the jump, going down 2-0 in the early stages of the game off some bad bounces. Paxton Malone would bury a rebound goal in the search by the Skating Rebels to keep their season alive. However, it would be too little too late as the Skating Rebels fall 3-1 to one to the Flames, effectively ending their season. You play in the playoffs and those tight games like that, um, you know, you have to be, to be concentrating more on, on all the small aspects of the game um, because that's all it takes. It's, you yeah, know, it's one it. blown assignment here or there. And unfortunately, you know, I think that uh, we uh, – we never really got in any type of rhythm at all offensively. And, uh, you know, Liberty did a great job defensively on us. They clogged up the neutral zone well, and they were great in their, in their D zone coverage. Um, you know, we have to score more than one, one goal to win a hockey game in my mind. And, you know, unfortunately, we weren't able to do that. And I thought their goal. Coach Roboni also said the team intends to add depth scoring to their team next season, as he and the rest of the coaching staff are happy with their decor and goaltending. He also said the team is looking for more exhibition games against NCAA D1 teams next season in a greater effort to catch the eye of Eric Harper and the athletic department. That's your look in Vegas sports reporting in studio. I am the Josh Heron. Back to you, Lena. Josh, thank you for that report. Now, if you recall the last show, we followed snowfall in Los Angeles, which is strange in itself, but the strange weather continued in LA, seeing a tornado spin up in Tinseltown. In this video captured, you can see the tornado picking up debris and swirling the pieces in the air. Now, we will go to this helicopter footage of a roof of a building that was completely torn out. Just a quick look at the amount of damage this twister caused. This tornado threw came without warning, and the National Weather Service explained why. So typically, uh, with the tornadoes that affect this area, they spin up very rapidly. Unfortunately, sometimes too rapidly to detect or warn for. It's a very different character for the tornadoes that are occurring over the central and eastern United States, where there's a much stronger signal that, and, and a slower duration in terms of how they come about to form. The official start of spring came and went here on Earth. However, times are changing elsewhere in the solar system. The Hubble Space Telescope capturing these images of changing seasons on other planets. The ice giant rolls on its side around the sun and follows an 84-year orbit. So for 42 years, parts of one hemisphere are completely without sunlight. And even looking at the planet just seven years apart, you can see the orientation shift. Hubble also captured the different weather patterns on Jupiter. 
That concludes the fifth episode of Season 3 of University Speaks. Thanks for joining us today. Remember to follow our Instagram at UNI Speaks UNLV. We'll see you next time.